This episode is brought to you by Skillshare. The first thousand people to sign up using the link in the description will get their first two months free. They say war proves mankind doesn't need to invent monsters, as the monsters were inside us all along. Yet sometimes, soldiers report sightings of what can only be described as actual monsters, or in other cases, otherworldly beings. Are these battlefield stresses, or are men whose lives literally depend on remaining alert and aware seeing things that the rest of us might miss? Do mythological beasts stalk our battlefields? Do curious aliens observe from a distance, making notes on our primal, savage nature? That's what we'll try and figure out today, in this special episode of the infographic show's greatest mysteries, famous wartime paranormal sightings. The first paranormal event on our list comes from World War I and has become a staple of sea monster stories. At the outbreak of the war, the British steamer Iberian was cruising just off the coast of Ireland when it was attacked and sunk by the German submarine U-28. As the U-28's captain, Baron von Forstner, and seven other crew members watched the ship sink from the sub's conning tower, there was a sudden, large underwater explosion, likely from the ship's boiler detonating. The blast flung debris and men clear out of the water, but as the captain and his men watched incredulously, an animal, about 65 feet long, was flung into the air as well by the force of the explosion. Described as crocodile-like in shape, with pairs of strong, front and hind legs adapted for swimming, and a long head that tapered towards the nose, the monster was visible for about 10 to 15 seconds as it was blown out of the water before sinking back into the depths. Skeptics suggest that the story was fabricated by Baron von Forstner, and sadly six of the alleged eyewitnesses were all killed during the war. Only the ship's cook survived the war, though he would refuse to comment on the story. The 61 survivors of the Iberian also made no mention of the creature, though with their ship sinking and then exploding in the waves beneath them, they were probably a little busy with the matter of survival at the time of the brief sighting. Outright fabrication by a baron and naval officer, or confirmed sighting of a surviving ancient seafaring sauropod? We might never know, but the resemblance to other sea monsters around the world is uncanny. Our next paranormal sighting comes from the jungles of Africa. Colonel Remy van Leerd was a decorated Belgian pilot who became an ace during World War II after escaping from a German prison camp. In 1959, flying a mission on behalf of the UN during the crisis in the Congo, Leard spotted a monstrous snake slithering through a clearing in the jungle. Amazed at the size of the snake below him, Leard brought his chopper low and began a series of passes so he could get a picture of the beast. Successfully snapping one photo, Leard went on to claim that the snake reared up as the chopper flew low, raising a head the size of a donkey's over 10 feet into the air. Leard's photograph is unfortunately slightly blurry, though it does show what seems to be an incredibly large snake. Given Leard's background, it seems unlikely he would go through the trouble of making up a story and then fabricating a fake photo to go along with it. And if that's not enough, in 2016, workers building a dam in Brazil discovered a whopping 33-foot, 882-pound anaconda lurking in caves near the construction site. The discovery of snakes that regularly exceed 26 feet in length lends further credence to Leard's story and photograph. From war-torn jungle to war-torn jungle, we now move to the skies above Vietnam, where in 1968, C-130 loadmaster Robert L. Pollock and his flight crew experienced a truly perplexing and troubling event. Flying just off the coast of Vietnam and exhausted after a 20-hour day of back-and-forth flights, ferrying troops and cargo, Pollock was seated in the empty cargo compartment when he noticed movement at the rear of the aircraft. Looking up from the paperwork he was completing, Pollock was stunned to see a whirling gray cloudy mass forming at the rear right troop door, spinning clockwise and filling the rear of the aircraft within seconds. Fearing a high-pressure fluid leak that was atomizing the fluid and filling the compartment, Pollock used the interphone system to ask the pilot if there were any indications of trouble of any kind, to which the pilot responded, no. As the misty fog filled the compartment, Pollock was joined by the engineer, navigator, co-pilot, and pilot as the mist continued to creep forwards toward them. In an interview, Pollock recalls that when the navigator said, this is spooky, he felt anger, as up to that point, he was sure that what they were witnessing was some sort of aircraft malfunction and not anything paranormal. Double-checking their instruments, the crew still found no problems with the aircraft. 
Finally, placing his hand in the mass, Pollock recalls that the strange fog was so thick and opaque that his hand disappeared from sight. Holding on to each other, Pollock and the engineer walked into the mass, still thinking that there was some kind of mechanical failure of the aircraft, and that if they did not find the source soon, it would fill the cockpit and put them in serious jeopardy. Plunging into the mass, the lights in the aircraft disappeared, and the two were forced to feel their way around the cargo bay by touch, keeping in contact with the rest of the flight crew, who called out constantly, inquiring about their well-being. According to Pollock, the strange mist did not burn or sting his eyes, nor make breathing difficult. He also felt no threat from the mass, though as he made his way out of it, he was still fearful of it filling the cockpit and blinding the crew as they tried to land their plane. As if on cue, the fog or mist slowly began to recede, moving straight back to the same door it had apparently entered through, whirling counterclockwise this time, before disappearing into nothingness. Upon landing, Pollock and the rest of his crew never mentioned the incident between each other ever again, Pollock owing the silence on the matter to the fact that they were a veteran combat crew and in the midst of war, surviving anything that did not kill them outright was enough not to worry about it. Our next wartime paranormal entry comes from post-revolution Russia in 1925 and was reported by one of the most credible eyewitnesses one could ask for. General Mikhail Stepanovich Topilsky was on a mission hunting anti-Soviet guerrillas hiding out in the western segment of the Pamir Mountains when his troop came upon a small village that regaled them with stories of ape-like creatures that lived in the mountains. Dismissing the stories as local superstition, the general ordered his men into the mountains where they soon discovered several sets of distinct distinctly human-like tracks in the fresh snow. Making notes of the tracks in his personal journal, General Topilsky and his men pressed on in their mission to find the gorillas, finally tracking them to a large cave high in the mountains. After the resulting firefight, the general's men took prisoners, and amongst them, a man who told Topilsky of weird ape-man-like creatures that had attacked them with clubs. According to the prisoner, his band had managed to kill one of them, which plummeted down an icefall. The general ordered his men to dig for the creature's corpse, finding it in short order. Per the general's notes, the body belonged to a male creature, about 5 foot 5 inches tall, elderly or old, judging by the grayish color of the hair in several places. Though the general did not skin the corpse as he had originally planned to, and instead ordered his men to give it a proper burial, he made detailed notes of the body, noting that the creature was covered in hair, not fur, with large, hairless feet covered in hard, brown skin. One may be forgiven for thinking a bunch of bored soldiers on patrol may make up an exciting story to impress their peers, but would a general in the young Soviet army risk his reputation to fabricate a tall tale? Unfortunately, with no physical evidence, it's up to you to decide. Monsters haunt our dreams and seemingly, too, are battlefields. But are soldiers around the world really encountering monsters, or simply unknown biological specimens and strange but perfectly natural phenomenon? Without hard proof, we may never know. Are you intrigued by the supernatural? How about ghosts? If you want to know how to make surreal disappearing portraits, then we suggest taking a Skillshare class called Ghost Photography, Craft a Surreal Disappearing Portrait. In this class, you'll be making surreal portraits of barely there ghosts and invisible folks. And this is just one of the many classes offered by Skillshare. In fact, they offer over 20,000. If animation isn't what you're interested in, Skillshare offers classes in other disciplines like data science, web development, the culinary arts, and more. The first 1,000 people to sign up by visiting Skillshare.com infographics33 or by clicking the link in the description will receive two months of Skillshare absolutely free. Join Skillshare and start learning today. So, have you ever seen a monster or otherworldly being? Let us know in the comments. Also, be sure to watch our other video called This Man Spent 43 Years in Isolation. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.